podcast solution for the atomic structure question. This was asked on the 1999 exam. I'm posting this podcast just as a gentle reminder that you might get asked. An atomic structure question hasn't been asked in a long time. And really, the purpose of this podcast is to show you that all these calculations can be done just using the equations found on this equation sheet. So they're right here under atomic structure and the constants and symbols that are given. Okay, so rather than spending a lot of time in class to go over this concept, I really want to hammer in an appreciation for these equations. Today we're going to be using the energy equation. We're going to be using the speed of light equation. And we're going to be using this other energy equation right here. Um, this first energy equation relates Planck's constant H and that can be found right here to the frequency V. And if you don't know that V stands for frequency, there it is right there. Um, and this is what we're going to be solving for. Second equation relates to speed of light C, and there it is right there. Okay. To the wavelength lambda. If you don't know that lambda is wavelength, you can find that right here. And the frequency. So notice there's a connection here between the two, and I'm going to have you guys write out that equation first. Okay, So if E equals HV and C equals lambda V, then E equals HC over lambda. So we're going to be using this equation. It's an important relationship between the two. This last equation is a way of calculating energy at any specific energy level N. So if you think of an atom, there's the nucleus where the protons and electrons live, and you have these principal energy levels, say n equals 1 and n equals 2, um, where the electrons live, the electrons have an energy at each energy level, because the nucleus, which is positive, we know is trying to yank them in. So the energy at each energy level is found by taking this number divided by the energy level squared right there. So let's go through and calculate these equations. I'm actually just going to show you how to set them up. You guys can plug in the numbers if you want. Um, before we start, it's important to know that wavelength is measured in meters, but it's always given in nanometers. So there are 10 to the 9th nanometers in every one meter. Okay. So let's look at this problem. Um, all right, here it is. And let's get our pen going. First question, um, they give you the uh, wavelength um, associated with the energy that breaks the chlorine-chlorine sigma bond, and they want the frequency. Okay, so if we have wavelength and we have frequency for this first problem, we're going to use this equation, C equals lambda V. They're asking for frequency, so V equals C divided by lambda. You're going to get this from the chart, and you're going to plug in this number here. So what's going to go in right here is 495 times 10 to the negative ninth, because we are converting it to meters. Appropriate scientific notation would have that value. Okay, so you plug it in, you get your answer. So two. Okay, this one wants the energy in joules, so we know that energy equals h v. We calculated v in this last problem, so the answer you get from this last problem is going to go here. And we're going to get Planck's constant from the equation sheet. Plug it in there. You're going to get the energy. It's going to be in units of joules. Um, for 3, it's asking for the minimum energy in kilojoules first. Okay, So we're going to take our answer from 2. So whatever we got from 2, some joules, Okay, we're going to divide that by 1,000 and we're going to get some answer in kilojoules. And it's important to understand that this is kilojoules per atom, or diatomic molecule chlorine. Okay, They tell us molecules, atoms, and ions right there. So if you want it per mole, you're really going to have to multiply it by the number of atoms in a mole, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and you're going to get your answer. Okay, So for this first set of problems, we used a C equals lambda V equation. We then took the V, the frequency, and multiplied it by Planck's constant to get energy. The third part, we divided it by 1,000 to get kilojoules, and that's per diatomic molecule. And we multiplied it by how many molecules there are in a mole to get the kilojoules per energy per mole. Okay, B is using that last equation. It says that a certain line in the hydrogen 
uh, spectrum, hydrogen spectrum, is associated with the transition from n equals 6 to n equals 2. So if you have a nucleus right here, that electron was out here at n equals 6, and it went down to n equals 2. So think about these as those energy levels that I drew up, that I drew up for you earlier. Um, so first, indicate whether the H atom emits or absorbs energy. So let's do that down here. The answer is emits. It goes um, goes from higher to lower. Anytime you go from a higher energy level, say n equals six, to a lower energy or light is emitted. It takes energy or energy is needed to be absorbed to promote an electron from n equals two to n equals six. When it's out there in the higher energy level, we call this the excited state, and down here we call it the ground state. So it's emitted. Um, two. Calculate the wavelength in nanometers associated with this spectral line. So the first thing is we want to get the energy difference in between. So we have to get the energy at each wavelength. Okay. So at n equals 2, E is negative 2.18 times 10 to the, let's go back here. How does that equation work again? I don't even have it memorized. Hello, Mr. Oh. There we go. Where are you? Negative 2.178 times 10 to the negative 18. Times 10 to the negative 18 divided by n squared, so this is going to be 2 squared. And at n equals 6, it's going to be the same thing. Negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 17 divided by 6 squared. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you're going to subtract the energy at 6 minus the energy at 2 from both of these values. And you're going to get the energy associated with the 6 to 2 transition. Okay, then what you're going to do, so once you get this number, you're going to get a value. It's going to be something joules. You're going to plug that into the HC over lambda equation I gave you earlier because they're asking you for the wavelength in nanometers associated with this equation. So you're going to rearrange that, and you're going to know that wavelength equals hc divided by whatever answer in joules you got. And you're going to multiply by 10 to the ninth because they want the answer in nanometers. Okay, so that's how you do that one. For the last one, it says, account for the observation that the energy associated with the same electronic transition in helium plus ion is greater than the energy associated with the transition in hydrogen. Well, that's simple. We know that. In helium plus, um, there are two protons in the nucleus pulling harder, and this is the big thing, on the electron than the one proton in hydrogen nucleus. So anytime you're talking about energy of electrons, you want to think about the proton, how many protons are in the nucleus pulling. So again, hopefully this created an appreciation for the fact that all these problems could be solved using either the speed of light equation, the energy frequency Planck's constant equation, the combination of the two seen right here, and the energy at a particular energy level n. Take care.